Hey guys, it's Monday and I am Ronald Griffin for ArtificialAnimation.com and in this tutorial I will be taking you through how I create my vocals. And the reason for this is because I've gotten an outstanding amount of questions from people asking me what microphone do I use, how do I get my vocals sounding like they do, and how, how do I do it. Um, and to quickly skim over the microphone part, I use a Audio-Technica AT2020 microphone. Um, before that I used an SL150 from Editor's Keys. Both of these microphones are pretty cheap. Um, and I used to be in your position, if that's um, that's the position you are in that I just described. Um, I used to look at big sites and I used to think, how, how are they getting how are they getting such good vocals? I mean, I want to do that. And then and I end up finding out that they, they have a microphone that costs three to four thousand dollars. And then I start thinking, oh well, <laughs> I'll never be able to achieve that. But here I am, and I can honestly say I am very happy with the audio quality I have in my tutorials. Um, not, if that sounds ego egotistical of me, I'm sorry, that <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I meant it, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with what I have, um, especially for the price at which you can also have it at. And that is around $100, um, honestly, $130, $150, maybe cheaper if you look on Amazon. Um, you really don't need to put a lot of money into your audio setup if you want good audio uh, quality, at least not when it comes to these microphones, because there are so many podcasters now, there are so many game announcers, there, there are so many game announcers, sorry, there are so many tutorial makers, so many people, and there's such a high demand for these microphones that do good, yet don't cost you a kidney, so you really don't have to look far. Um, if you want my advice, I would I would say definitely stay clear of the, the blue snowball microphones. They are um, they're very hyped and you'll hear a lot of people talk about them, but they're really not that great when it comes to uh, to actually picking up um, all the ranges of your vocals. And if you if you put it against an AT2020 or an SL150, I guarantee that the difference is, is gonna be uh, day and night, especially if you've uh, done the editing right. So if you want my advice, um, Check out the AT2020 USB microphone and check out the SL150. And there's also SL300 now. Um, all of these microphones are good. They're you know entry level, um, but they do the job. Uh, if you've got a bit of money to throw around and you're serious about this kind of stuff uh, and you sort of want to skip that first step, you can look into the Newman microphones. Um, they have one going for around $700, I think. Um, I think it was a TL7, something along those lines. Um, I remember I really wanted that microphone, <laughs> um, but it was it was just unrealistically ex expensive, especially for the uses that I use the microphone for. Um, so anyway, getting that out of the way, what do I use to make it sound like it does? Because obviously the original track is a lot different than what you hear in the tutorials. And that is because I apply a lot of effects, as anyone should when they're doing this sort of stuff. So I use Adobe Audition to apply all of my effects to the audio. I've been using Audition for many years now, um, as far back as I ever owned a sort of a serious microphone. Another thing to mention is the microphone I'm using right now has a shock mount on it, um, which stops the vibration coming into the uh, the condenser microphone. And I also have a pop filter, which eliminates the heavy P's and the B's, and you know, it, it takes out the popping. Um, so I've got that set up right now, and it's on just a, a normal desk mount. So it's, it's not a complicated setup, um, and it's a USB microphone, this specific one. You can get XLR of the AT2020, but this is USB, and it just, it works. So to edit uh, all of my vocals, I use Adobe Audition, like I mentioned, and right now we'll be using Audition CS6. Um, I used to use CS3, but I quickly grabbed CS6 for you guys, um, because if you are new to this, then I highly recommend getting the latest version. Um, this one seems to work a lot better as well, so there's really no question about it. CS6 uh, is what I would recommend. So. I'm just going to go ahead and record a quick snippet while we are talking here. So to do that, you just hit the record button or you can go to file, new audio file. Um, but make sure the sample rate, the channels and the bit depth match your audio input. So if you search for audio manage uh, or manage audio, you can get manage audio device. Um, this panel, uh, it will tell you. So here's my AT2020 USB microphone. If I right click properties and then go to, uh, let's see. There we go. If we go to advanced tab, you can see its its input is at one channel, 16 bit, uh, 48,000 hertz. Now you can change this. I mean, you could record at 8,000 hertz um, if you wanted to, 
But uh, for what I'm doing, mono, uh, which is one channel, 16-bit and 48,000 hertz works just fine. And so now that we have that information, we can match it up. Um, now I'm just going to do this in 44, uh, 100 because I don't need 48,000 hertz for this specific uh, track. Uh, channels mono, um, that's very important, and 16 depth like we had in that window. Otherwise you're going to get a bunch of errors and it's just not going to be nice. So you can see I've recorded, or I am recording currently, and I'm just going to stop and leave some dead air. Now, the reason I left that dead air there at the end um, was so that we could use this to sample the noise. Um, now, keep in mind that Audition is really, really broad. Uh, people use this to mix their tracks, people use this to mix their vocals um, with their instruments. Yeah, it does a, a whole bunch of stuff, so it's not geared towards just vocal editing, although it does it flawlessly. Um, in the effect track, you actually got a bunch of presets, which are pretty cool to play around with, like AM radio, if we play this back now. And it's just not going to be nice. So you can see. So you can hear, you can do a lot of different stuff. Um, but we won't be using the uh, the presets rack um, for this specific tutorial. I'll just be showing you exactly how I do my stuff. So first of all, we want to capture the noise profile. And to do this, we're going to select um, the piece of noise that we left. We left this dead air specifically so we could just sample um, what happens when we are not talking. And that would be the noise. So make sure to leave some noise because we want to sample it. So this is a good section of uh, noise. Um, with that selected, you can go to Effects, and uh, Noise Reduction, Noise Reduction Process, and here you can see noise, uh, noise Print Undefined, please capture Noise Print. This basically means we have to capture the profile. So select your noise, like I said, and then hit the Capture Noise Print button. And here you can see we've got a chart. And now what's important in this dialog is that depending on your microphone, you'll want to tune this Noise Reduction Percentage slider. Um, because if you have a microphone that has a lot of background noise, um, I mean, you got a lot of stuff going on in the background and uh, you get a bad noise print, you know, things just go bad for you, you're going to start getting your, your vocals cut. So you may be talking and it may just cut it. It may just drop the decibels of your voice and it, it'll just sound horrible. It'll sound like you're talking in a tin can. So if you're getting problems, just mess with this noise reduction value. Um, 50 works good for a lot of people, but I happen to know that the AT2020 does 100 just fine. Again, just depends on your microphone. Play around with the setting um, is honestly what I could say. Reduced by, so this is just how much um, in, in a technical term it'll be reduced by. 40 decibels is basically, if we go 40 decibels down, um, it, it's you can't hear it at all. So that's fine. Um, we can just hit uh, this button here, select entire file. Um, that means it will be applied to the entire file and not just that little section. And then we can hit apply and you can see that it changes and our noise has been removed here and it's also affected these areas here where, where I can find noise. So let's play it back and it's just not going to be nice. So you can see I've recorded or I am recording currently and I'm just going to stop and leave some dead air. Okay, so that's fair enough. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So. What we're going to do next is we're going to make our vocals sound a bit more crisp and a bit more clear. Now, if you've got a lot of S going on, um, sort of got this hissing, when you when you say words that involve S, like um, you know, sponge, you've got a lot of that hissing going on. There's ways to limit that, and uh, I'm sure if you look on YouTube, you'll find a bunch of tutorials. Um, However, there is a very simple way of doing this, and a lot of people actually use um, the plugin called Dynamics Processing um, to do all of their vocals, but I don't. Um, I'll quickly just go ahead and show you, though. So if you go to Amplitude and Compression, and then Dynamics Processing, um, you can see there's a smooth, you know, there's a bunch of presets here. I don't really mess around with this. I used to, but not anymore. Um, so if we just select the preset DSer Hard, um, I'm going to select Hard. You probably shouldn't. I'm going to select Hard just to, just to give you a clear idea of what it does. So let's play it back and listen to the S's. They'll become immediately very flat. It's not going to be nice. So you can see I've recorded, or I am recording currently, and I'm just going to stop and leave some dead air. So you can hear it's almost like it's it's squishing my S out. It's, it's just making it completely flat. And... Um, Obviously, that's a bit extreme, and you, you probably don't want to be doing that. But if you've got a lot of that hissing going on, DSer Light or Medium, um, they both work fantastically at killing that. So 
sort of worth checking out. Another very popular uh, sort of preset that people like to throw on the vocals is the classic soft knee. And uh, I think this is way too much reverb, but you can listen for yourself. And it's just not gonna be nice. So you can see I've recorded, or I am recording currently, and I'm just gonna stop and leave some dead air. Yeah, you can hear the reverb really on the end of this clip here. Um, but anyway, that is not what I do to my uh, audio. You can try and mess around with that yourself, but I will show you what I do as a final step. I go to effects and I go special and mastering. Now, the specific mastering profile I have up in front of me is sort of custom built. Um, I just sort of took a mix and match some settings here and there. And I got it working pretty well for my microphone. I'll quickly go over this. This is the equalizer of all the tones in your uh, recording and you can, these little uh, check boxes down here, you got the little, uh, the different little points. The, this is the low shelf, this is the high shelf, and you you know you can play around with the decibels of each of those. Now, you can just go ahead and copy this and see how it works for you. Um, that's what I would do uh, personally. I'll go over some of the settings. So reverb, reverberation. That is basically how um, echoey it'll sound, how how much of a hole you're in basically. So if we put this up and I let you listen and it's just not going to be nice. You can hear we're sort of like in a church and that's not specifically what I want. I, w I just want that crisp, smooth, flat vocal feel. Uh, the exciter, this is sort of a, how do I say this, a wetness of your voice. Um, it, it, it can be referred to as wetness, it can be referred to as crisp, um, you know, whatever floats your boat. It's, it's just how crisp your vocals end up sounding. So if you've got too much of this, it can sound a bit stupid. Um, but the mode I use is tape and um, usually around the 80 mark is good for my microphone. Again, that just depends on your microphone. And um, we'll skip the loudness maximizer because I don't use it. Output gain, um, with some of this, um, we are actually boosting certain um, frequencies in our voice. So dropping the decibels down a bit um, will actually help to give it more of a linear sound. You can see that we've got some pretty high peaks here. Anyway, we're peaking up. So, um, it's probably a good idea to squish it down a bit anyway. So let's listen and let's hear what this sounds like. And it's just not gonna be nice. So you can see I've recorded, or I am recording currently, and I'm just gonna stop and leave some dead air. So you can hear that is, that is actually, I'm, I'm really happy with that, that's, that's pretty good to me. Um, you, can, you can hear the difference if I play it with and without, and it's just not gonna be nice. So you can see I've recorded, or I am recording currently, and I'm just gonna stop and leave some dead air. So I think that sounds really crisp. We can even up the exciter a bit. It's just not gonna be nice. So you can see I've recorded, or I am rec Yeah, you can, you can hear that sounds really crisp, really clear. Um, there's, no, there's no quality compromise. And uh, it's, just, it's, a, it's a good track. Um, and these settings have worked for me for a very long time. Um, I advise you to, to sort of play around with the settings yourself. Um, when you are done, all you need to do is click apply. Now, we end up with our sort of final track, and I would usually cut this piece off. But if you're if you're matching this to a video and you want it to remain the video length, then you know you want to leave it all so you can match it up perfectly. Um, but anyway, that's sort of how I go about um, doing my vocals. Uh, it's it's really not that complicated, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of different plugins you can have. Um, there's there's a ton of stuff, but I just think that this is uh, this keeps it simple. Um, and it keeps it nice. So if you've taken anything from this tutorial, um, I hope it's, it's, it's taught you that you don't need to spend a whole bunch on audio equipment and you can get a good result for, for relatively uh, cheap. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, you can uh, put them in the comment section below, send me a message, send me an email, anything like that. And hopefully if you have learned something, you will subscribe, share, like, whatever, whatever you people do these days. Um, I do make weekly tutorials, motion graphics mainly. This was the exception. Um, and hopefully get some Photoshop tutorials rolling pretty soon. Um, so I hope you subscribe and I hope I will see you back in my next tutorial. Uh, so take care for now.